What's up folks, Mike here at Berlin Watches. Welcome to the video. And uh, today's video is part five of the Seiko Poke reassembly. And in part five, we're gonna be reassembling the dial side components, which will be the, the stem setting lever and uh, the date parts, all of that kind of uh, jazz. So I've laid all the parts out uh, in front of me and I've got my grease ready to uh, reassemble things. So I'm just gonna explain things as I reassemble them. Uh, it should be a relatively short video because we're gonna do the dial side and then we're gonna flip it over and uh, finish it off by adding the uh, automatic parts. And then the final video in the series will be the recasing, which will be video number six, I believe. So if you've been following along uh, with the previous videos, uh, then we're nearly at an end with this particular watch, but there will be uh, other videos uh, to come. So I'm gonna try and keep the movement in the frame. And I've angled the camera so that it's slightly away from me, but pointing down. Uh, so you should get a better view of the movement. Still working on uh, angles so that you can get a nice close look uh, whilst keeping the camera in a good position. So without further ado, I'm going to pre-lubricate some areas um, on the movement and then we're going to start fitting component parts. So the first part I want to fit is actually the cannon pinion, so we're going to start there. So I'm going to use a small dab of grease. on the center wheel. Touch grease to the minute wheel. Date wheel. And the setting wheel area. So we're going to grab the cannon pinion. It's a hair stuck to it. How much you try and get rid of hair is always there. So that's a cannon pinion in position. Next, we're going to place the clutch wheel or the castle wheel, depending on what you call it. place that in there we're going to pre-lubricate the stem uh, so we're going to lubricate the end section and all four, uh, four parts of the uh, square section of the stem and a little bit of uh, grease up there as well don't need a great deal just a little dab will do So the next part we're going to fit is the setting bolt, which is uh, this part here. And before we do that, we're going to pre-grease um, the area that the setting bolt sits on. And a little bit of grease on the underside notch of this lever here. And a teeny touch on the center of that castle wheel. I like to be quite generous with the grease when it comes to the setting bolt. This is quite a, uh, a common sticking point with these watches when they've uh, not been serviced in a long time. And they do tend to go a long time between services. So I don't want it drying out uh, too early. Just checking that the uh, setting bolt is in there properly. Next, we're going to fit the yoke spring combined, which is this little uh, part here. So instead of having a yoke and a yoke spring, this is actually a part that's combined and uh, it doesn't keep the yoke under constant tension, it only keeps it under tension when it's pulled out into the setting position. So it's quite a clever design by Seiko, used in quite a lot of their earlier watches. So at the moment there's no tension there, 
but when you pull the stem out once everything's fitted, uh, the tension only comes when um, the castle wheel or the clutch wheel is pushed forward. So I think that's quite a clever, uh, simple but clever system used by Seiko. So now that's in position, uh, we can fit the setting lever spring. We'll find the two screws for that, which are the two larger screws. There's one. Here's the one. Now you can of course, if you want to use a piece of pegwood to hold the setting lever down, you can do. Most of the time it just kind of sits in position. Again, unlike Swiss watches where the setting lever spring is kept under a reasonable amount of tension, uh, these Seikos don't tend to uh, have that kind of problem. It's quite a clever design. So we're going to add a touch of grease to the end of the setting lever spring. Don't worry about any excess because we're going to rub that off with uh, the rotter coat. And then we're going to put tension back on that uh, section by putting the tension spring back on. So as you can see, that's all working fine. So we're going to pull the stem out. And that's all working fine. What you can also do is add a touch of uh, oil to that pivot point. Uh, D5 will work perfectly well. It's just to help stop it seizing. Now that grease is spread, we're going to use a bit of Rodico to clean up the excess. Because if you have too much uh, excessive grease, it travels to parts that you don't want it to travel to, and it also attracts any dirt or debris um, floating around in the movement, and that'll create wear and tear further down the line. So we're going to add the minute wheel and the setting wheel. The important thing to note about the setting wheel, it's probably not going to come up in the video, I'll put it there on the side, is with this setting wheel uh, there are two sides to it. One has a, a round cutout in the top and that's the bar, part that you want facing upwards, um, not the other way around. And then we're going to fit the minute train bridge. There are two screws that go in here. One is a standard small screw, same as the ones that are used in the date cover plate. And then there's a small screw, sort of like a cheese head screw with a flat top. It's the only one on this side of the movement, so you can't miss it or mistake it. But as in the previous videos, uh, I did make a point of saying, if you're not sure where the screws go, then just put them back in the plates when you've taking all the parts out and then, then you'll be able to relocate them quite easily. Let's put the first screw in there. I'm not going to tighten it down all the way because we need to position the second screw. Doesn't want to go in. Excuse my hands getting in the way. So once those parts are in position, you can tighten that right down. So now what we're going to do is we can pull the stem out. And now we can see that the cannon pinion is moving quite nicely. Now at this point, 
uh, in the movement reassembly, if you put the cannon and pinion back in place and you find that it's really easy to turn, it's super loose, then that normally is an indication that the cannon and pinion is too loose and uh, that needs to be tightened up. Uh, but that's probably for another video of uh, how to tighten up a uh, cannon and pinion. Um, but um, if you haven't got a cannon and pinion tightening tool, then you can just use any 6119 caliber cannon and pinion most of the time and uh, you can just replace it outright. But that's certainly one point uh, to check on the watch is the tightness of the cannon pinion. You want a fair amount of resistance uh, like you would with almost um, any cannon pinion and you can tell that by if you have any mechanical watch at home uh, that is relatively new and you turn the hands you'll feel a certain level of resistance. The resistance that you feel when you're turning the hands is that part which is the, uh, the cannon pinion. It's just the right amount of uh, friction. So the next part we're going to lubricate here is uh, the quick set uh, quick set date lever. So there's two posts here and here and that's for this uh, lever here to sit on. So we're going to give that a little bit of lubrication. Again I like to be quite generous with the grease as this is another area that dries out relatively quickly. Helps if you actually put it on the right way around. So if I activate that, you'll see the lever move. And that is what activates uh, the day and date change. Now sometimes this part can actually become bent and that can cause issues with the, uh, the day wheel changing. Uh, the date wheel is nearly never a problem. The date, uh, the day wheel nearly always changes. It's the day wheel that tends to be uh, problematic. So if I can actually see, because I keep getting blurry vision, I need to go to the uh, opticians and get my eyes tested again. One of the um, issues of having this as a job. So I'm going to fit the, uh, the date wheel there. Just clean out my loop. And then there's a small plastic uh, piece here. And on one side there are two notches. And on the other side there is a single notch. So that just gets placed with the two notches downwards. Until it sits into the wheel there like so. Before we fit any other parts we're going to fit the intermediate date wheel which is this uh, little double tooth wheel here. There's uh, that side and then there's uh, the other side so you can see it's a double tooth gear. Now in this particular instance this gear is metal. Uh, most of them will be plastic uh, but if you do have a metal gear then you want to add a touch of lubrication to the, the post here. That's a little too much there. Because the plastic gears are self-lubricating, but the metal ones obviously are not. So if you have a metal gear, you'll need to lubricate it. If you have a plastic gear, then you don't need to worry. Now with this uh, date setting, this single notch on this side of the plastic needs to line up with uh, this gap here. I don't know if you can see it. This gap here in uh, the metal cover for the date finger. And then we're going to fit the screw and this is a shouldered screw, it's the only shouldered screw in the dial side and it's usually polished so you can't mistake it for anything else. And just before we do that I nearly forgot, add the hour wheel. So hour wheel first, I do this all the time. Get that to sit down. So 
So with all of those components fitted, the only thing left to do now is to add uh, the day and the date. Only a couple of uh, components. But before we add the day and the date, we're going to quickly check uh, the functioning of the actual movement. Now, as you can see there, all the parts are moving correctly. So the next part is going to be the date wheel. That's just going to sit in position. And then we get the date spring. But to use a piece of pegwood to hold the end of the date spring whilst we put that in under tension. And then we're going to fit the date copper plate. Got to make sure it's the right orientation. So how the date plug cover plate goes on is like so. This cutout here is for the calendar wheel, so that can move freely. This hole here is for the um, lower balance jewel, and these two parts here will always go over this uh, date jumper spring. And you just got to be careful when you're fitting this plate that you get it in the correct position. And the reason for that is there are two holes here. And this hole here is where the minute recording wheel pinion uh, comes out. So what you want to do before you put any screws down is you want to just hold the plate down gently with some pegwood. Push in uh, the date jumper so that it's not trapped underneath the plate. and fit your first screw. Doesn't have to be this particular screw, it can be any screw. And that one went void. I've got a couple of screws in there now. So with those screws in position, we're just going to give it a quick check. Make sure that the date ring is free. And uh, as we can see, it is. So we're going to fit the last two screws. Grab these little blighters, they're rather small. So, before we fit the final parts on the dial side, which is the, uh, the day wheel and the C clip, is there's two things we need to do. We need to lubricate the date spring, uh, the date spring jumper. ever so slightly touch of grease and that will help it slide around and also want a touch of it on the day jumper as well just teeniest amount on there and then what we're going to do before we fit the day wheel is we're going to turn the hands uh, 24 hours and check that the date turns over which you just did there. We'll advance it a little bit more and then we'll fit the day wheel. So when you fit the day wheel you need to move it around until you can 
get a gap in there. Then if you take a, a fine oiler, but this is actually a large oiler, you just gently pull back on the day spring until it goes into position like that. And then you take the little sea washer, you fit that and using the tips of your tweezers, gently put that into position. Now with a sea washer you want to make sure that the rounded side is down and the flat side is up uh, and that way when the next person comes to service the movement they can easily uh, remove uh, that c-clip because when it's put round the other way it makes it a little bit more difficult um, for the next person. So we're going to quickly check the day and date moves with a quick set. As you can see both of those move. And the final check for this side would be to forward it again for another 24 hours and watch them both uh, turn over. So there goes the date and there goes the day. And that is the dial side of the Seiko Pogue Gun. So now we're going to flip it over and uh, get on with the automatic system which is even simpler uh, than this side. So catch you in a moment. Okay folks, so we're back onto the train side of the movement, uh, which is uh, still running. And we're going to assemble the uh, automatic section, uh, which is only these very few components here, which you'll see as I add them uh, to the movement. Uh, the first part to go on is um, the automatic cover plate. And that just places over those two uh, screw holes there and then we're gonna fit the pull wheel but before that I'm just gonna add a little touch of lubrication to that end pivot there So you fit the pull wheel until it's in the right position and you'll feel it go into the, the hole on the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit the uh, magic lever. Now the magic lever can only actually go on one way into this plate and you'll know because there'll be a depression here in the bearing and then there'll be a piece that sticks out on the magic finger and it's the bit that sticks out that goes into that depression so it can only actually uh, go one way so we're going to add a little bit of grease uh, to this center post here uh, so that it's free to move uh, once it's fitted because you want a nice uh, smooth automatic system to get the best wind when you're wearing it Now I've already actually lubricated the ball bearings on this um, this section here. Uh, you just need a little touch of say something like D5, uh, like a medium oil, and just gently touch one or two of the ball bearings and that'll carry it around the whole bearing. Now if you're unfortunate enough to have a bearing that is completely worn out and very wibbly wobbly, uh, then you can actually replace this bearing with the same bearing that's used in the 6119 movement. It requires a little bit of adjustment and a dueling tool but it can be done. Um, and it's quite often the case that these bearings wear out. They do last a very, very long time, but they do uh, wear out, but they are replaceable. So we're gonna take that um, auto bridge, and we're gonna place it over the top here. And then we use a bit of pegwood to apply a little bit of pressure whilst we move the magic finger into position. And then what you want to do is you want to take a driver and place it through onto the ratchet wheel and give it a little bit of a turn and you should see the pull wheel turning as well. 
Once that happens, then you'll know you're in the correct position. So we're just going to add the first bridge screw. Now that's in position, we can remove the pegwood and fit the second screw. So now we're going to fit the final part to the movement, which is the rotor. Again, this can only go on one way because of the cutout on the rotor itself. You want to hold this down just gently so that it doesn't move while you fit the final screw. Give it a quick test to see that the, uh, the ratchet wheel is moving. It should be fairly free to move, which it is. And the very last touch is adding a little touch of lubrication to the top of that pole wheel. And there we have it. That is now a completed 6139 movement. And that's the, uh, the date side as well. So the next video in the series will be part six where we're gonna recase uh, the watch. Um, we're gonna fit the dial and the hands. And then we can recase it in the in the watch itself and we're gonna set the hands and all the other all, all the other things that need to be finished with the watch will be done in the final part six video. Uh, but that's it for part five. So uh, just a brief recap, in the first part of the video we, we touched on how to reassemble the dial side and then the second half which we've just seen is the assembly of the automatic system and that is how it's done. Now I've done it, um, there might be some parts uh, or pointers that I've missed out because um, I'm not used to showing tutorials of how to do the movements, I just do them kind of instinctively because I've done thousands of them. Um, so if there's something I've missed and people want to add that information in the comments, then by all means uh, do so if you have uh, experience working with these movements. Uh, but until then, I'll try and get the next video up uh, just as soon as I can. But uh, for now, take care and have fun.